If you're doing a lab that involves calculations and chemical reactions, remember that stoichiometry, one thing you'll often be asked to calculate is the percent yield. So let's talk about what yield is first off. Yield is what you expect to get, or what you get, sorry, from an experiment or reaction. Uh, one area where you may have heard this term yield, at least in this context before, is in baking recipes. If you're baking cookies, for example, maybe on the recipe it says yield 12 cookies. That means you expect to get 12 cookies out of doing that baking project. Or if you're making muffins, maybe yield 24 muffins, you expect to get 24 muffins out of that. Okay, so yield is what you get from an experiment or reaction. Uh, the percent yield compares the actual yield to the theoretical yield. All right, so let's talk about what those are. So the actual yield is what you do actually get. It's the actual lab data you receive. Uh, often in chemistry, we do it by weighing. So it'll be the actual weighted mass or the weighed mass that you get from putting something out of balance. Now the theoretical yield is what you would predict. It's the predicted mass from your stoichiometry calculations. So if you do all your stoichiometry calculations, start out with the mass of your reactant, do your uh, go to grams, multiple ratio, then grams of the product, uh, those calculations are gonna get you the theoretical yield. And so to get percent yield, you do the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield and then times 100 to get it into percent. Now, some reactions have very low percent yields and that's because they might have a lot of other reactions that are going on uh, apart from the one that you're looking for. Those other reactions are called side reactions. Um, other reactions might have a very high percent yield. You might be very, very close to 100%. Uh, so your actual yield and theoretical yield would be extremely close to one another if you're near 100%. For the reaction we're doing in the lab today, the decomposition of baking soda, the percent yield is very close to 100%. So the way you will determine the correct decomposition reaction of baking soda is going to be to calculate the percent yield for the three reactions that you're figuring out. The reaction that has the percent yield closest to 100% is going to be the correct decomposition reaction.